Hey everyone, thanks for joining today. I am Maureen Blanford. I'm VP of Marketing here at GiveSmart and welcome to all of you fabulous fundraisers. I'm trying times for sure, but maybe we've got some bright lights ahead. I, I certainly think so. Um, we are at the GiveSmart team. We're flabbergasted um, weekly to see the results from brilliant fundraisers across the country uh, and we really could not share. So today is the first episode in our Outside the Room fundraising success series. Our last series was the Pivot Success um, and this is just continuing resource in the hopes that we can continue to inspire each other in the art of the possible. And I will come back to, um, to the outside the room uh, topic here in a second. Uh, but today we're bringing you kind of an unusual take for us, an organization focused on year round fundraising before they needed to do year round. Uh, and they have some cool results to share and highlighting elements really that almost everyone can do. So we are joined today by the inimitable Jason Skoog from Reach for Resources in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Jason, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Maureen. How are you doing today? I am excited to hear this. Um, and uh, and also with us today, as ever, for those of you who have, who have been on more than one of these, um, today our very own Megan Leeds, Jason's Customer Success Manager with GiveSmart, and Patrick Clore, GiveSmart's Head of Customer Insights, both deeply experienced fundraisers in their own right and actually super close to our data on the nearly 1,400 customers who've had to make a pivot since mid-March. Megan and Patrick, thanks so much for you two for joining. Excited to be here, thank you. Absolutely. All right, so a couple of notes on resources. Um, so we will have some stuff put into chat that you'll have access to, certainly customer success stories, which we keep adding to. Um, most of you who know us will know that we've been really doing a lot of pivot success and resources, how do you pivot? But for now, we're moving into really making the outside the room program uh, take the lead. Uh, and outside the room is really all about resources and successes to support you moving towards your annual goals, possibly without an anchor annual gala, um, and really being able to do fundraising all year round. So, so when the galas come back, we hope you continue to, to raise all year round and, and utilize some of these elements. Um, either way, you can count on us almost every Thursday afternoon to bring you a live fundraising success story. With that, let's get a pulse on how you're feeling. So we could just populate this poll if y'all wouldn't mind weighing in on how confident you're feeling that you'll reach your goals this year, regardless of what your fiscal year is. Um, if you're not feeling great about it, if you think you're making some progress, if you think you'll definitely hit it, or if you might surpass it, which is what we're hearing from some of our customers, which is amazing. Uh, and while folks are weighing in, Jason, could you please give us a high level on your mission? Yeah, our mission here at REACH in Minneapolis is to support individuals with developmental disabilities and mental illness to reach their full potential. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, thank you for that. And Kelsey, if you think we have enough um, people who have weighed in, can we go ahead and share? Great. Well, <laughs> Patrick, um, is this is this resonating for you and what you're seeing? It is. Uh, I mean, I think left brain, right brain. I mean, to me, it makes complete sense. Seeing somewhat of an of an even split there, um, because I think there's the you know mix of people who uh, the spring is when they ran their fundraiser versus folks who do it in the fall. Uh, and so I think, I mean, I feel like fundraising is is something that follows the school year. So to me, um, actually makes complete sense. But I think uh, obviously good to see that. That there's uh if we average it all out there's there's folks more uh, on the optimistic side and i think after some of the stuff we'll uh we'll cover today i'd be curious we're not going to do it but it'd be awesome to re-pull at the end um because i think there's some some often stuff that hopefully uh, helps instill some confidence yeah absolutely and and we will continue to share how how these numbers move over the coming weeks um so with that today we are going to cover how reach for resources uh, really took a modern approach to fundraising um, long before they got involved with us, um, but we're delighted to be a partner with them. Um, we're going to talk about the importance of community engagement, which which you'll know from your Gift Smart folks that we talk about that quite a lot and, and why it's important. Um, as ever, Patrick will join us at the end. 
um, to talk about some compelling data points um, that he thinks we need to know about. And then as ever, uh, I've asked Jason and Megan if they can hang on after, you know, kind of the 30 minutes of the program to answer as many questions as possible. And Jason, bless him, has um, is happy to even answer questions after that. So if you'd like to connect with Jason, um, just let us know. All right, with that, y'all, um, the great thing about Reach for Resources, um, this is all outside the room, outside an annual event. Megan, can you kick us off with some of the fundraising elements? Absolutely. So I first started working with Jason about a year ago um, for their first event, which was called Reach on Tap for 2019. Um, so right away, he came to our first phone call with tons of ideas, um, and it was a really different approach from other clients that I'd worked with. Um, and he had already been playing around in the GiveSmart system to the point where I was almost playing catch up because he already had like three different campaigns going on. Um, so one really cool idea that stuck with me kind of carried across with me throughout the, this past year um, is this resort contest that Jason put together. Uh, Jason, do you mind explaining um, or sharing the kind of the purpose behind that resort contest for Reach on Tap? Yeah, so uh, what I started to do uh, was look around and figure out what assets do I have? You know, we're we had the last year was a great year economy wise i mean who put in their budget that we were going to have a global pandemic yet here we are uh so last year we're trying to figure out you know how can we increase things and do things a little bit different and i realized through my other contacts i, I knew a bunch of resorts and i also knew an uh, owner of a radio station so what we did is we got seven resorts to each donate a week stay at their resort uh, local resort. They're not, none of them are national chains or mom and pop deals. Uh, then we got our radio station to donate a prize for them. And so then what we tried to do was have the resorts, each of them had 1,500 to 2,500 social media followers, but then each had five to 10,000 email lists. And so I thought, hmm, what I did was I had the resort each donate a week and then promote it to their social media people. Then the radio station, um, when they did that, they had to mention they're trying to win a prize on, on the radio station. So the radio station got promoted to 50, 60,000 people. Then the radio station donated a $5,000 prize to whichever resort could raise the most amount of money for reach. And then of course we got to keep the money. And our success went from just this summer event where we're sitting around drinking beer and, and playing bingo or whatever, we went from raising 10000 to 26500 in one year. I mean, stunning. And and for me, the two things that are interesting, Megan, are um, for, for folks that are concerned about how are we going to get, um, how are we going to get donations in this current climate um, and how are we going to raise uh, and involve, you know, sponsors or partners. I think that's really interesting, but also folks who have been concerned about doing more of like the vacation packages. Um, what was it about this that really tickled you? Yeah, so what really stood out to me was Jason really took advantage of his uh, his reach, like outside of his organization. Um, so he wasn't scared to contact local businesses in the area, your local radio station, and say like, hey, you know, we have this fundraiser going on. What can you contribute? Or is there anything you can contribute? Um, for the most part, you know, you don't know what's out there until you ask. Um, and then so what it ended up working was just like Jason said, he, uh, the customers, your donors are bidding on these vacation packages. Uh, they want to stay. Um, so they get a win. Your donor, your donors get a win. The radio station gets a win. And then Reach for Resources gets a win because they get to keep the money. Um, and as far as the current climate for fundraising, I say, you know, you can still absolutely encourage um, these types of like vacation packages or little mom and pop stops, um, but just be mindful of like any expiration dates, maybe extend the expiration or keep it a little bit more open ended because people are stuck at home. People do want to get out into the world um, and they want a trip or something to look forward to. So um, just using your contacts outside of your organization to really piece together um, some meaningful fundraising, you know, helps. Them. 
Perfect. Well, and, and Megan, well, the thing I want to encourage you that with is the worst thing you can do is say no. I mean, that's the worst thing that can happen. And exactly. the way I look at it, the way I looked at it was this: I don't have it, so I'm not losing anything. So by me asking, I'm really not losing anything. I didn't have it to begin with. So I just went ahead and asked. And you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. Fair enough. Well said. And then, um, so yeah, Jason uh, has just continued to come up with different ideas to hold this fundraising throughout the year. Uh, Jason, why don't you tell us a little bit about this radiothon that you held? Yeah, so this is one that we actually did during COVID-19. Uh, we had to really adjust our goals. We thought of this idea in December, and we, this is a radio station that donated for our uh, resort contest. But then uh, the Fishing for Life is another nonprofit we partnered with. Um, we thought, you know what, let's let's kind of put two organizations together and, and let's both go at it. Um, and so we split revenues. And then what we did was we went to a local construction company figuring, well, construction's not shut down. They, they, you know, they're probably doing okay. So they matched every every fifty-two dollar donation, dollar for dollar. And then when people did that, they got a free package of brats from a local meat market. Um, and, you know, our, to be truthful, we, our, our original goal in December was $100,000. Uh, COVID-19 hit, we quickly lowered that down to 30 and we came in just over 20. But, you know, you just have to adjust and go, geez, well, nobody saw that one coming. And, but there's $20,000 we didn't have. So it worked out. Absolutely. And then this was another idea that Jason and I had kind of started talking about around the time that we connected for Reach on for 2019. Um, Jason, do you mind telling us about your original idea that you had for these coupon cards? Um, and did you have any learning experiences from it? Yeah, so, you know, not every idea is a winner. Sometimes you're going to fail, and that's okay. You know, you're guaranteed to fail if you don't try. But this is something we tried. Uh, again, we got a construction company to to match or to give it to help us pay for the printing of these coupon cards, and then we had them to different local businesses and such, and completely misread the the atmosphere for these cards. That uh, you know, they bought a high school to do them and then things, and we had them barely breaking even. And now I got, I think we sold 80 cards, and I got I printed 5,000. But you know what? We tried. And it didn't work, but that's okay. I I love this point. I mean, we're that's a thing, you know, we talk about in marketing the kind of test and improve. And so you're one of the first ones we've talked to that was really um that that really highlighted this. And I think it's good for all of us because we can also learn from each other. So this is a great, this is a great example. Um, but Megan, you were surprised by this, weren't you? I was, because um, initially when we were talking about it, I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. You know, kids sell these coupon books all the time. Um, but it was funny to learn about how, you know, it wasn't as successful as originally planned. And this is something that I've talked with other clients um, where they come to me and they ask like, okay, well, do you have any, you know, have any organizations really failed with their online funds or anything? Has anything been a disaster? And all in all, I have not heard of a single situation that it all went up in flames. So um, if you're, you know, trying to broaden your horizons a little bit, you know, try something a little bit new um, and then you can kind of judge from there, like, okay, does this have a good reaction or does this not have a good reaction? Um, so it definitely doesn't hurt to try um, and, you know, reach out to your donors. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, it's a learning experience and you can move on from there. Okay. And then this one really struck me because I really admire how Jason reaches like to all of the different categories of his donor database. So he's in Minnesota. He has these donors that have different interests. Um, so he tapped into for Reach on Tap, people that like to hang out, drink some beer, play some games. And then for Cackle and Spur, this is more so for 
um, the hunting crowd and also like what Jason likes. Um, so, you know, you don't have to tailor, you know, just one fundraiser just for kind of a broad audience. Um, you can definitely hold little ones throughout the year ta uh, tailor to your specific audiences. Um, Jason, do you mind sharing what your mindset was or what your thought process was for um, coming up with a different type of events and like how this cackling spur uh, came together? Yeah, so my thought process is this, you know, disabilities affect everybody. It doesn't matter your race, it doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your gender, doesn't matter your political beliefs. Everybody knows somebody that has a disability or a mental illness. And so for me to, my thought process is what, whereas we're putting events together, I want to do some that catered to people that are traditionally conservative, some that are catered to traditionally liberal, some that are catered to people of independent because all their money is good with us and all of them are affected by uh, disability. So why would I exclude anybody? This particular uh, hunt campaign dwarfs all the other campaigns we do. We make more on this hunt uh, than we do all our other campaign campaigns combined. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, everybody's really loyal to it and has fun with it. And it's something I like to do. So I figured if I'd like to do it, other people would like to do it. Why not? Let's try it. And it, in four years ago, this didn't exist. So we created it from scratch. First year we raised 13,000, second year we raised 23,000, last year we raised 50,000. And this year we're already, we're already sold out for half of it. Um, and we still got four months to go before we get to it. Uh, I think, you know, the, uh, this, is a, this is what we call a teaser. Uh, when we get into some of the stuff later, uh, we're gonna refer back to um, the email screenshot that you guys see on screen here. Um, because I think one of the, you know, things that, that kind of is actually what led me to reach out to Jason uh, and his team is, um, you know, similar to so many people, the timing of this, of this was impacted um, by COVID-19. Uh, but, you know, they sent an email uh, that I think is just a good uh, compassion, you know, commentary that gave people, you know, recognition that, hey, we had engaged you about this and it's coming up and now we're moving it so we don't want to lose that engagement. Um, so uh, we'll refer back to it. So that's my that's my teaser here as we as we get into some of the other things uh, just to draw back to. Love it. Awesome. And then Jason, for your bullathon, um, what was your how um, it was originally supposed to be set up and what your plan is for this year. Yeah, so this is our annual ball We've been doing it for 28 years. Um, we had 75 people with disabilities in person last year bowling. I don't know be the age of people, but if you remember old fashioned readathons where you get, you know, you, in school you read a book and people pledge for 10 cents or a nickel for every book you read. And then they, you know, then you get prizes. Well, this is the same kind of thing where uh, the actual people we support are the ones raising the fund for us. And then, of course, we have some sponsors. Uh, we were originally scheduled to have this mid-April, but more in Minnesota here, we're still locked down. We can't even go inside to a restaurant yet. So we had to move it. Um, and so we moved it now to September. We didn't cancel it. So... You know, if you can move things, move them. You know, if, you, if you're locked, locked in, you have to. But And now, uh, with what we're doing with one of our other events, we're thinking, well, maybe we do this as a hybrid, where we do it partially in person and partially partially virtual. And we're going to see how that goes. I love your hybrid comment. I think we're going to start to be seeing more of that as well. Um, Megan, anything on 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 this element that um, was this a fairly standard successful, or was there was there a unique element to it? Yeah, definitely more so of a unique element, um, which is kind of a ongoing theme with Jason and his other campaigns is. Um, you know, you don't have to limit it to just your local community or your local, uh, you know, donor database. You can open this to nationwide. Um, so. 
Jason had brought up before, like, you know, if you are in Indiana, if you're in Illinois, if you're in another state and you want to participate in this Bolathon, we have this hybrid event where, you know, you can participate online um, and you can still uh, attend the silent auction, you can place donations and you're having fun, uh, you know, with your friends and your family um, in your own community. So I really appreciate the reach of, you know, we don't have to limit it to just a certain area. Perfect. Thanks for that. And then this one is so what we call our like donation only campaigns. Um, I love to encourage setting these up because you know it doesn't hurt to just ask for donations at any time. Um, Jason, do you mind telling us about this memorial fund that you had set up? Yeah. So uh, part of the trick of working, uh, you know, unfortunate part of working with individuals with disabilities, sometimes their lifespans aren't as long as the rest of us. Uh, but the gentleman in the picture there, Jim, uh, he's awesome. He was one of our chief fundraisers for Bolathon. And unfortunately, he got cancer and passed away last year, um, about two weeks before Bolathon. So we really missed Jim. Uh, and then his parents said, hey, is there something we can do to set up a memorial? We still want to help you guys out. Uh, can we set up a memorial? And so we set this up. And what I really liked about it was we didn't talk about reach uh, pretty much more than just the one sentence. Uh, this was about Jim. And then it gave us a link that instead of directing people right to our Reach for Resources website, we directed everybody right to the memorial website hosted by GiveSmart. And people really, really like that. No, and, um, you know, I, I want to probably because as we were going through stuff with Jason and his team, uh, you know, we're very thankful that they they allowed us to share this because obviously, um, you know, it is a, a sensitive topic, but it's something we've seen so many organizations start to do within the platform um, is do these memorial funds and kind of in honor of and remembrance of. Uh, and I think it's, you know, as we talk about different campaigns and different ways to to both raise funds, but also engage your your um, donor base and your constituents, you know, this really resonated on a, a personal level for me um, of, I think, you know, tech for good is a phrase at a technology company that we like to use. Um, but I think seeing this in, in seeing organizations that have uh, honored people who have supported their organizations, um, you know, in this way is great. And obviously, you know, being able to, to do so, um, you know, with the, the subscription you have and, and not having an extra spend to do something good um, is fantastic. And then uh, kind of the next um, the next slide that uh, that we go into um, is is one of the ones that as we look at, at data and different things like this um, is just one of the more creative, fun, exciting things uh, that that uh, Jason, when he first allowed us to to share it, I sent to my nieces in Hawaii who are three and six, uh, and they challenged me to a contest. So uh, I'm I'm both a fan of and and got to figure out what I'm going to draw since since that's not my forte. Um, but Megan and Jason, I'll let uh, I'll let you guys talk about this because I think. Um, you know, especially in the summertime as people look to do something a little bit more lighthearted or, um, you know, hey, if I can't do a golf event or something like that, that usually is, I think, historically what people have done in the summer, um, far and away, this, uh, this is one of the coolest things I've ever come across. Yeah, and honestly, yeah, not to be biased, but this might be my favorite uh, idea that Jason's had so far. Like, it's simple, it's accessible. Uh, yeah, Jason, go ahead and tell us about this idea. Yeah, so, you know, like everybody else, you know, we're sitting there going, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, as an essential health care organization, we still have to keep our doors open and keep trying to operate the best we can. Uh, we don't own any group homes, so we're trying to do everything virtually. And we applied uh, at 10 a.m. on the first round of the PPP loans, and we didn't get it. Um, I actually read the entire bill the day after it was written, and for the record, don't ever do that. Reading congressional legislation will mind your numb your mind. Uh, but I did it, and so we went into this, and we we didn't get it, and we're sitting there going, uh oh, we don't want to lay anyone off. What are we gonna do? Uh, cause for every person we lay off, and I bet you a lot of people are like this. Ten people with disabilities don't get help. So we we're like, uh oh. Um, the second one came around, and we got it. And my boss said. Well, you know, here's where we're at. We're still going to lose two to three hundred thousand dollars this year, so I need you to come up with something. Uh, I'm a one-person team, and so I'm an outdoors guy. If you think of a guy's guy, that's me. I I hunt, I fish, 
I play sports. I, I, I am not an artist in the least. But this goes back to, okay, what am I missing here? What, what element of people that aren't doing it? And so I saw a neighbor kid, you know, trying to draw some talk. I'm like, huh, there's an idea. So I called Megan. I said, I got an idea. Uh, here's what I want to do. And, she, and I said, can we do it? And she said, yeah, I think we can. Um, and so the idea is people can submit a drawing for free. They get a, each get a link. And then uh, that link goes to their picture. We have a different, bunch of different roles. And then they vote. Uh, they send that link to grandma, grandpa, you know, mom, dad, aunts and uncles. I guarantee you, like Patrick said, when his niece calls and says, Uncle Patrick, will you give me a dollar to vote on my contest? He's going to say, yeah, of course, and he'll, he'll donate $5. So I kind of decided. See how I do that? <laughs> so um, I kind of went with, you know, looking around at different businesses, realizing, you know, car dealerships sell one thirty fifty to $50,000 item, and they make a lot of money on that. But then you have grocery stores who make a lot of money, but they're selling sometimes items that cost for a dollar. So I, I thought, well, okay, right now the, the big item ticket items are kind of off the shelf for all those fundraisers. I'm going to go the grocery store route and make a little on a lot of them. And so, you know, try to get the $200,000 $1 at a time. And this is what I came up with. Amazing. And, and while I try and compose myself here, because it's just, it's all, it's also moving. Um, and, and what I love about a lot of these ideas are it's, you don't need tangible stuff. You know, you're not asking in these times, even though we still think that, that organizations will donate, um, this is truly stuff anyone can do. Um, and, and what a great idea for raising, um, and that, before we get into the community piece, Jason, I was hoping you could give us a really high level um, because it is a little unusual, wouldn't you say, that your organization doesn't do the annual gala? Can you give me 30 seconds on why? Yeah, you know, actually, I told my boss when she hired me, I literally in the interview said, if you want me to do an annual gala or if you want me to do a golf tournament, or if you want me to do a 5K, hire somebody else because I don't want to do it. Uh, this was five years ago. Um, because it's just noise. Everybody's doing them. And so what we end up doing is now we're just trying to compete against everybody else. So I, I said to her, I said, I want to create things that nobody else is doing. Some we're going to do good at, uh, at, you know, like a hunt and the brewery event. Some like the, um, the coupon card. And the bigger monumental sale was the 80s roller disco. Uh, we tried to do a uh, we actually had the local news. I didn't tell you any of this one. We had the local newspaper there and one of the television stations, and we tried to do an 80s roller disco. Everybody dressed up as 80s. We had all 80s music played. Uh, only 40 people showed up. The day we ended up holding it, it was minus six. Aww. Nobody wanted to come up. What do you do? You know, thank, thankfully, the, the local newspaper here, the Minneapolis Star Tribune, you know, they took their pictures and, and got in an angles and, and helped us make it work. But, you know, some of those things work, some don't. Yeah, you know, it's that, just the way it is. That one I'm a little sad about because I actually went roller skating in the 80s. So I'm not sure I have any of the clothes left, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. you know, I, that's what I, thought I thought it would be great, but turned out not so much. Yes. And the, for me, the salient point is, um, yes, the annual galas are important, and yes, we want them to come back, and we love them, but the thing is, there's stuff you can do outside the galas, outside the room, to continue to move towards your target, and that's really what we're evangelizing, and not for nothing. Um, I know we have a wide variety of people on the call today, but for Give Smart customers in particular, none of this costs anymore. Um, you get to use the platform as many times as you want for as many fundraising elements as you want. Well, we're happy for everyone to be customers. Um, we want to particularly uh, evangelize to give smart customers. Use the platform all year round. Donors are happy to give. They want to engage. All right, off my um, soapbox. Um, so no, I, I know what 
I, I want to I want to second that. You know, I obviously don't work for Gismart. Uh, Megan and Brittany have been awesome. They've been rock stars, uh, and the, the support you get is incredible. And that's where I started looking at things. From, okay, I got a brand new toy. How can I use this? You know, kind of how I can explain it. And the other thing about community engagement, one thing I, I know we're getting into that, I want to really tell everyone is when we talk about businesses, remember they're owned by, mostly they're owned by people. And so you're going and talking to people and yeah. families and that, they, they get it. Yep, thanks man, absolutely. Um, all right, with that, now let's let's turn to community engagement. One of the things that we're hearing from successes overall is, is community engagement and social reach. Um, so Megan, I, I'm sorry to hustle us up here a little bit. I know we have a lot of great content and we'll invite Jason back to go into even more detail on some other things, but walk us through a couple of these elements, um, Megan, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. So um, a very easy way to, um, you know, uh, get up your donations throughout the year is to offer recurring donations. So um, you can set this up right on your GiveSmart homepage. Um, I believe you can also set those up at, um, under individual uh, donation item types as well. So you can capture donor interest on a couple couple different areas on the GiveSmart site. Um, so you know why just accept you know a one-time hundred dollar donation when you can send uh you can set somebody up for fifty dollars a month for the rest of the year um so reoccurring donations is a great way to kind of keep those donations up throughout the rest of the year outside of just like your main fundraising events and is that uh been something jason that you've seen uh since you know pre give smart post give smart are you seeing people interested in doing the recurring donations you know it, it, it's starting to pick up for us that's the one area that we know at reach here that you know we're lacking it's tricky sometimes being a one-person team uh so you you can do all these things without having to have a staff of 20. so don't they feel like you need to i'm, I'm a one-person team um, but yeah, the recurring, the vote, in fact, we just got a recurring donation last night. And what we've set up is little tchotchkes are actually little nice things that we can say thank you and, and give to them. Uh, but the funny thing is, is most people don't want the little tchotchkes. They tell you to keep it and give it to somebody else. And they, they just want to set up easy. You know, and the way I look at it is, do I care if somebody gives me a hundred dollars, um, right one time or gives me a hundred dollars ten dollars at a time either way i got a hundred dollars what do i care absolutely all right megan did have we covered this yet yeah i think so jason talked about how um ten dollars a month can you could receive the little tchotchke so the mug or you know a little keychain um so uh, including some incentives on there, but like you said too, most people don't want the incentives. They just want the opportunity to give monthly. Oh, I love that. I didn't even know that slide was there. How about that? <laughs> and I'll jump in on this one because I think um, you know one things that kind of as Jason mentioned, um, you know, a few times you talk about donor engagement and in talking to people and trying to really maximize the fundraising at the end of the day. Um, this was also one of the, the better things in terms of educating and informing donors that, uh, that we've come across where, um, you know, reminding people and kind of putting it in front of their face that, you know, hey, if they're going to make a contribution, they have the ability to, you know, to increase that. And so I think putting in just the simple verbiage about the CARES Act and, you know, any applicable, um, you know, verbiage that might be, might be uh, relevant to any organization, you know, or local or state or whatever the case might be. Um, and I think, you know, making it, making it simple and making it branded to the organization um, is something that's, uh, I think, just from an education standpoint, uh, you know, as we talk to people, engaging donors, making it simple. Um, this was just a, a great example of this one as we uh, kind of go into some of the numbers side of things, um, you know, making it, making it easy for the numbers to go up is always a good thing. Right. Well, Patrick, on that slide, um, what we did is we realized there's a lot of companies that will match the donations and actually that's a big component for us you know sometimes geez you can see some people match up to five thousand dollars or a thousand dollars but somebody donates twenty dollars a month you know their company will match it so that 250 turns into 500 and you didn't even have to do anything except for let them know hey your company matches you know and now you got 500 bucks and you didn't do anything 
I love it. All right, now at this point, Jason and Megan, you guys get a tiny breather right before Q and A, um, and Patrick is going to roll through some data points as he's been digging in here. Patrick, over to you. Yep, absolutely. So the um, first one is kind of specific to uh, to reach for resources. So as we'd mentioned with the um, with the Cackling Spurs event that was supposed to take place in the spring, got moved to the fall. Um, one of the things, you know, we've seen a lot of people who, what do I do? Do I, do I cancel something? Do I postpone? Do I reschedule? Uh, and so, I mean, uh, Jason, just from going into the data, I get, um, get into some of our customers, um, kind of email list list. So I had seen Jason's one evening uh, and it stopped me dead in my tracks. Cause I think it was just, uh, it was compassion and empathy and, uh, and really resonated to me. And so they had done a discount code. Uh, and I think showing people, hey, you know, we care about you and, and we know you support us. We want to support you. But um, we looked into the data where uh, this was sent on March 31st. So the first 30 days of the month of March and then looking at the 48 hours after this email. Um, and, you know, even with a discount code being applied, there was still a 62 percent increase in terms of the ticketing revenue compared to the 30 days prior. Um, and there was an 85 percent increase in terms of the tickets sold. Uh, and so I think, you know, that's obviously, you know, each organization, you're going to think about some ways to get creative, but uh, I think leveraging that kind of discount concept and showing people that, hey, you know, we need your support, but we know you're hurting um, and, and, you know, not being, um, you know, being mindful, I guess, of, of their situation as well as yours. Uh, and then the other thing I know, you know, we hear a lot of, oh, do I ask and what's the right time? Um, Jason was kind enough to let us know that there was one donor who uh, this was sent kind of right as COVID-19 was, was really um, rearing its head in full force and one donor had a negative reaction, but he got on the phone and called that individual personally. Uh, and that individual um, had a family member that was a nurse kind of working on the front lines. Um, so obviously it was, you know, just as with many people, emotional about it, but they had a productive conversation. Uh, and Jason, I think, graciously extended the discount code, you know, for that individual and his family so, to show the support. And again, I think just the, the compassion really um, is something that I commend Jason for quite a bit um, as it stuck out to me, but I think, you know, also shows that the, um, the value from a ROI standpoint is there. And then as we get into um, the next one, this is, you know, as Maureen mentioned at the beginning of this, you know, with the outside the room concept, as we talk to fundraisers about, you know, going beyond the traditional gala or golf event and, and really looking at ways such as Station's team has brilliantly done it of raising even if it's small amounts incrementally because a dollar is a dollar is a dollar and that is better than no dollars um and so we looked you know into this really at the end of last year um and so as you can see on the left chart there with 2019 is we took a look across the entire database at organizations who ran one campaign two campaigns and three campaigns and what stuck out um and so as you can see there there was a 49 percent increase on average in organizations who ran a second campaign uh, and that went up to 64% for running a, a third campaign. So obviously, you know, trying new things, some are gonna, some are gonna hit, some are gonna miss. But um, one of the reasons we're excited to have this series in particular and really talk about this and bring it to the forefront um, is, is because we see the value there. And, and similar to all of you, where uh, running forecasting and, and building budgets at the moment is a very difficult task because you have to balance historical trend lines with recency because it is a totally different landscape. Um, so while the historical, we still see the value uh, before we're gonna you know, present things like this, we made sure that, that it's not an outdated message. So what we did on the right is took a look at the first five months of the year, so from January 1st to the end of May, um, to see if that stand trend still continued. Um, and what was amazingly encouraging to me uh, is actually it's even, it's even more valuable. So uh, whereas before it was a 49%, increase it's now at 68 percent in terms of organizations who do run a second campaign um and again you know with averages there's always going to be outliers but um seeing seeing that is encouraging for me and, and one of the reasons we're going to keep this conversation front and center um because we see the values there but at the same time um we're seeing that you know there's only 17 percent of fundraisers at the moment who are actively engaging in it so uh for the first five months of the year, only 17% of folks have ran multiple or have ran one campaign, but you know, we want to see that 17 grow to 83. And I think um, we were talking about an organization earlier today who mentioned, you know, as they did a, a pivot and tried something new. One of the best things about trying something new and being at the forefront is it gives you a little bit of leeway to fail um, because you are trying it, you know, running a virtual gala in May versus in September, you know, 
it's fresh in May, there's, you run the risk of saturation in September. So I think trying these creative ways and, and really trying to get people to think outside the room, um, you know, is we're excited. The examples we shared here today of only 7%, 17% of what's possible. Uh, and so I think Jason's team and some of the other folks that we're excited to, to talk with in these series have amazing ideas and stories, but as that 17% grows, the yeah. amount of ideas and options that are gonna be available, I think, you know, the potential in that for me is encouraging. I think, um, you know, similar to Maureen, I'm, I wish the roller disco would have been a hit, um, but, you know, being, based in Chicago and, and born and raised during the Michael Jordan heyday uh, and the last dance, my, my quote that I would offer everybody uh, that he says that resonates with me is, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games, 26 times I was trusted to take the winning shot and missed. By failing over and over again in life, that is why I succeed. So is everything gonna hit? No, not at all. We're not gonna tell you that it is, but more are gonna hit than miss and that's the value of being able to try. Um, and so uh, we're excited to, to keep looking into the data and, and to find the trends and to showcase stuff such as what Jason and his team um, have done because I think uh, the possibilities are, are endless and we're excited to see, to see where it goes from here. Love it. All right, with that, y'all, um, questions are coming in hot and heavy. So if you, well, that didn't sound right, did it? Um, there, we're getting questions in. So if you have questions, go ahead and have them. Um, just want you to know that every Thursday afternoon, um, uh, 2 p.m., so my bad, I don't have 2 p.m. in there for next week, um, but then also uh, in a couple of weeks, the team will be doing campaigns to run this summer, which again, summer is traditionally a little bit slow for fundraising, um, but not anymore, folks, so this is a lot of good stuff there as well, and with that, we're going to turn to questions. Um, question speed round. Um, so Jason, first question for you. How does the food and drink work if everyone is in separate places? Is this a coupon for later use? Yeah, you know what, what we're gonna do, um, we're actually gonna try to do curbside pickup and we're actually gonna utilize a bunch of different volunteers that um, can come and pick it up right there but if somebody comes to the event and they can't uh, get it, then maybe they can go and pick it up later. Or uh, we have our volunteers that are going to pick it up and deliver it to them. So it's a different perfect. way to use volunteers. Perfect, perfect. Um, another Jason question. What did you offer the sponsors? So the sponsor thing is always a big question for people, especially because sponsors get so much spotlight in a big gala. So what did you offer them and what feedback have you gotten from sponsors? Well, the sponsors, the great thing about that is they all get it. Um, they're all in the same boat. And so what we do is we try to highlight them. Um, one of the things that we do with our sponsors is at the event, when we can physically hold it, we give them time to talk. At any of our events, um, we don't talk about REITs but more than five minutes uh, because we should have done all of that ahead of time. So we actually turn the floor over uh, during some of the time and let our sponsors speak uh, to everybody. And everyone loves that. And so they get it. They know where we're at, that, you know, they can't meet either. So uh thankfully they they're all gracious they get it so we try to do we figure out social media ways we can help them and i think you know the sponsors obviously you know i, I think a lot of people bring it up uh i think one of the things that that jason mentioned earlier resonated um which is you know the thing they've done with um with the resorts and the radio station and kind of creating an ecosystem that is beneficial to everybody and i think the um you know the impressions that people get uh and actually earlier today we were talking to um uh group at the Ronald McDonald House here in Chicago who, who ran a virtual gala and they had told us that um, they actually were a little disappointed. Uh, they didn't consider modifying their pricing for sponsors because um, actually the sponsors got more value because instead of just at the event being featured on a board or on a scrolling thing uh, by social media campaigns and uh, expanding the reach by going online and not being restricted and, and being more of an inclusive giving and not, okay, we can only have 500 people uh, is actually the sponsors get more mentions and got more value for their investment. That's oh. not going to be the case in every situation by any means. But I think um, each setting face to face versus online has its own advantages and disadvantages. But, um, you know, I think with some of the creativity that we talked about today, there's definitely a way that's 
um, you know, that can kind of maintain those those partnerships. And I think for some organizations who find themselves in different positions, you know, might be a chance to um, to partner with community, you know, maybe in a different way that, that wasn't possible before. Well, and I want to add one other thing. You know, like I said, most of the businesses in this country are run by people and they get it and they want to help your organization. Uh, we have one of our partners, he's actually out there doing a campaign for us. And he's like, hey, how can I help you? And so that's part of, you know, it helps that I used to be a business owner. And so I'm coming to, I, I understand they're, what they need and need win too. So if you just remember there are people that need a win too and figure that out, hey, how can I help them? And the really, really the secret is if you can help them make more money, they're going to give you more money. That's the way it works. I feel like I've used up my quota of love it's today, but I love that. That is a great perspective on sponsors. Um, Megan, over to you, and then I might want Jason's take here as well. Um, Megan, do you recommend a registration fee for online virtual events in addition to asking for donations? We've kind of run through a couple different scenarios with that. So the ones that we've seen have the most success as far as um, interaction with the site, getting as many people in there as possible, is offering it as a free registration so it doesn't cost anything to sign up, but encouraging a donation while they are signing up. So saying like, hey, you know, you are uh, event is online this year, you can register here, there's no ticket price, but if you'd like, please consider placing a donation instead. Um, and what's nice too is you don't have to necessarily limit the donation amount. So you can leave it open-ended, um, you know, guests can type in whatever they'd like, they can skip it if they want. Um, but at the end of the day, the more people in your platform, the more reach that you have. So um, the more people that are interacting with your silent auction or when you're sending out donation texts, the more people that are interacting with that. So we really like to encourage, um, you know, getting as many people as registered as possible. Um, and then, you know, encouraging like, hey, if you don't mind, you know, throw us a couple bucks as a donation while you're doing that. Great, Jason, yeah, does that yeah, yeah, you know, in fact, last night uh, we had a committee meeting for our summer event and we actually just canceled the ticket price for our event on June 22nd uh, and changed it to a free event uh, simply because that, uh, you know, our governor didn't allow us to be inside at a restaurant yet. And so as of June 1st, we thought we were going to be able to hold it inside, uh, but Right now, we can only have 50 people outside. And like Ambar said, what, what are you guys going to do if it rains? We can't let you inside. So we decided, well, okay, well, let's just change this. And so we went to a virtual full, you know, free ticket event. Um, but at that point, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're actually going to do some, we're going to introduce Facebook Live. We're going to do some other things. And we're going to make it a fun interactive event and actually get people to ask people straight up to donate. Um, but for our hunt in the fall, um, no, nah, we're not discounting that. And they're hunters and they're used to, if it rains, it rains. You're going to get wet. That's how it is. They're used to it and they're all good with it. So some we are, some we aren't. You know, you, you know that's the thing with every event. You, you, just, you have to be willing to adapt and Take it, take it as it comes, because raise your hand here if any of you have been through a, a global pandemic that shut the country down for four months. <laughs> I don't see any hands. I don't see any hands raised, but you know, partially because nobody's done it, but also because it's a webinar and I can't see you. Um, but none of us have been through it. Nobody has, and so you know, you're just gonna have to try. Some are going to work, some aren't. Good, good. Um, great point. Um, so I want to do a micro and macro on this, Jason first and then Patrick. Um, in the current um, economic downturn, do you find people like at the individual level are spending money on these kind of options? Um, if so, what type of bidding are you seeing apart from business donations? Um, Jason, over to you on that, what you're seeing. Um. You know, our, our bidding for some event is just starting to pick up. Um, right now, the money's out there. People have money. Um, they're, they're getting back in the economy. 
I think it, like 90% of the people still are working, um, but they're afraid to spend it because they don't know what's coming. Every time we turn around, it's something else. And so people right now are holding on to some of it, but I'm also seeing that they're, they're starting to spend it and they're starting to get to, I think we've turned a corner and people are like, you know what? Enough of this. I want to get back to my normal life and they're starting to spend money. Um, that's kind of what I'm seeing. And I think, you know, in terms of, of kind of at the, at the macro level, I mean, I think we have seen, um, you know, a shift. Uh, and I think I just pulled it up just so we can give you the up to the moment on it um, is, you know, from the past month, uh, 64% of the money raised in our platform has been through a donation uh, and then 18% through silent auction items uh, and then 5% through instant buy, um, which can be, you know, sign up, but it can be a whole bunch of, of different things. Um, and I think that has definitely, you know, been the case, seeing people do um, some different donation campaigns, um, you know, or membership drives or annual fund, things of that nature. Um, but I think, you know, still seeing the, the silent auction items being in place uh, in some of the instant buys. So uh, I think, you know, certainly the types of items has shifted a bit away from live events, sport tickets, things of that, just with the uncertainty. So I think, you know, going with more concrete, what you know is gonna be able to be delivered um, or items and stuff like that. And I think that's, you know, as Maureen mentioned, you know, with the trucker, some of these things, um, doing things that, that maybe it's more about engagement and getting people as opposed to it is, you know, filling the, the top of the funnel in terms of the fundraising. Um, but, um, you know, definitely it's a trend where we will keep a look at and, and make sure that we convey um, going forward in these series and, and other pieces of communication in terms of those trends that we're seeing. Um, good. Quick question. We'll get to here, but the first one is just quick. Um, uh, Jason, what does the winner of the chalk art con contest get? Uh, we have six different divisions, and first place in each division gets a $500 Visa gift card. Second place gets a $250 Visa gift card. Third place gets $100. Uh, all of those were donated within 48 hours of my creating this contest. And then five random people, uh, so even if you're not an artist, uh, are going to win a two-night stay at any Great Wolf Lodge across the country with four water park passes. So you don't even have to be an artist. You can still win just for playing. Love it. Um, I see another love it. Um, okay, my last one is um, the, is the on call. How would you execute that in today's economic and lockdown environment? Can you execute it? The on call. What do you mean? The on call campaign. The reach on call. Oh, the reach on tap. Oh, reach on tap. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. 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 Yeah, so uh no that's okay um you know that's the one you, we just last night decided we had to adapt um and you know unfortunately we had to to change it to a virtual uh because we could be outside and take the and take the chance and gamble but if it rains there's nothing we can do but what i told my boss last night and this is this is the truth ready to be ready to pivot is if between now and June 22nd, the governor of our state says we can go back inside and have it, I'm making the call and we're having it in time. And so we're going to quickly change again and, and email everybody that, uh, that's that been registered or been bidding on things and saying, hey, we're going inside. Come and join us because everybody's going to want to. So this, you just got to be flexible. Fabulous. Oh my God. This has been so great. I love these. These are such happy afternoons. Um, with that, Jason, Megan, Patrick, thank you so much, all of you, especially Jason, but really all of you for sharing your insights. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank and, you. This is fantastic. <laughs> so fun. Um, and thanks to all of you for joining us today. We are here for you. We're rooting for you. And please don't hesitate to reach out if we can help you continue to move towards your goals and have a great rest of your day. Exactly. Stay safe and keep at it. Thanks, man.